deaf camera on my girlfriend Katie. She thinks there's something in the house. I don't know. You believe me, right? I think we're gonna have a very interesting time capturing whatever paranormal phenomena is occurring or is not occurring. Hi, I'm Matt, he's Matt, and we've got your geek news right here. And this week it's a review of the most terrifying film that was never supposed to be released. Paranormal Activity. It was purchased by DreamWorks and Paramount so that they could do a high budget remake. But in exclusive screenings, it became very obvious that this movie was perfectly terrifying already. How terrifying, you ask? Well, since we were at a special advanced screening, we'll tell you right now. Now, a lot of people have certain assumptions about what they're going to get out of a horror film. Mm -hmm. Their blood, mm -hmm. guts, a few good jumps and scares, and some TNA. Which they pretty much all do with Jason, the Freddy, the Saw, and the Halloween movies. And that's why I have a special subgenre I like to call terror movies. They don't come out in America very often. In fact, the Japanese and the Koreans they do terror better than most countries. Yeah, but Paranormal Activity absolutely just terrified me. Definitely. Now, before we get into spoilers, we'll try to give you an idea of what you're in for with this movie. And then we will be tearing this movie up in all of its spoilery splendor. Mm -hmm. Windows are locked. Doors are locked. The alarm is on. I'm hearing a weird sound. Something's here. I feel it breathing on me. Footsteps in, but there's no footsteps out. Oh, God. Oh, my. As you can probably already tell, this is a found footage type film. So the real fear cred in this movie comes from realism. Mm -hmm. Now it started off nice and slow. Katie and Micah were completely normal looking, a wonderful regular couple. And I'm so glad Paramount didn't reshoot it with oh. bigger named actors like they were initially planning because it worked really well with these characters. Absolutely. The idea that a movie is most effective when it can suspend disbelief means that casting unknowns makes it perfectly easy to do that. Definitely. Now, I don't usually mind these home video types of films, but I was never a huge fan of Blair Witch Project, which this is actually being compared to quite often. Uh, I'm definitely more into, you know, the Cloverfield type thing, but oh, And God good. bless, God bless Micah for having a tripod in a found footage movie for once. Which wow. he also helped shoot the movie, which is pretty sweet, eh? He yeah. and Katie, sweet. Anyway, regardless, the home video feel worked really well with this movie because we as viewers are being told this is all real. So all the little bits of evidence you see throughout the film, it's extra terrifying because now, it's already placed in this world of realism. Absolutely. Paranormal activity. Duh. It has an amazing rising feeling of tension and dread. And as the movie rolls along, <laughs> it really, you know, as usual, the best part of any horror movie, the time it's scariest, is when it has amazing sound design mm -hmm. and shows very little. And that is absolutely true in this film. Definitely, oh. yeah. There is no guts and gore to worry about really in this film. But be ready to sleep with the light on afterwards. Now, the first time filmmaker Oren Pelly is a software programmer by day. And after making Paranormal Activity for $15,000, he's even showed Steven Spielberg what scary is all about. Oh my gosh. So if you like horror movies. Or terror movies. We can't give Paranormal Activity more praise. It really hits it out of the park, and the fans have made it a success already. But now that a social media push has demanded it by over one million people, you could go see it nationwide when it opens up. So go support the indies. Definitely. Okay, now we're about to get into the spoilery bits, so turn us off now if you have not seen Paranormal Activity yet. Looks like something bit you. It's not the house, it's me. You cannot run from this, it will follow you. I'm in control. You're not in control. All right. First off, what was the scariest part for you? Uh, numerous. It started off at the part where you see her for the first time standing next to the bed in that catatonic state. Oh. Terrifying. And then the next part that scared me the most is, you know, after he has that baby powder on the steps to kind of test out if there's any footprints. And the next morning you see those three clawed footprints. Doesn't it make you think they should like check it up in a demonology book somewhere, like Buffy the Vampire style? Again, like, oh, Mike, this must Mike be and Katie a... were not Matt and Matt. They are yeah. not that geeky, okay? okay so enough. anyway, it was terrifying when we saw that. And then the part that scared me the most is when they hear that crash in the day and they go running up the stairs and you realize that their photo has been smashed. But like, spine tingling because you know that that demon 
freaking hates Micah. Because, <laughs> like, it was smashed in his face, and then there was, like, claw marks right where his face was. And even he was like, oh, oh damn! Geez. And the amazing <laughs> thing, I, I, just this little touch of the fact that it had been clawed through past where the glass was. Oh, that was just hair. a little... I mean, it, there were so many parts that was so scary. Oh, yeah. The Ouija board thing? Oh, oh okay. Oh my well, God. for me, the scariest part was... It was really subtle. It was when they woke up after that enormous bang, like Godzilla just punted their house. Oh that my huge god! Bang. Sound played a huge role in that. And part. then when they looked downstairs, the chandelier was. Swinging. Oh my it's god! Such an e it's such an easy thing to do. But terrifying. But uh -uh. yeah, the atmosphere was just. Oh, oh my gosh! The fact that this movie went from being something that seemed like it was a ghost story, a poltergeist type of movie, yep. to being about a demonic possession. Oh. oh, that just got me right where it counts. Like, that is the scariest thing to and, me. But you know what? The only problem I had was how slowly they came to that conclusion. Uh, okay, I mean, they were kind of retards about it. I mean, did no one watch the movie The Exorcist? Clearly they lived in our universe 2000 and, what is two years ago that they did it three years ago? I mean, everyone knows what The Exorcist is. Everyone knows that is the scariest movie of all time. It's like, kind of like in zombie movies, yeah. when they don't know the word zombie and they're surprised when they see a flesh-eating cannibal undead. It's like, it's a zombie. Everyone knows it. It's in our collective consciousness. And you know what? What a jerk. I mean, you know what? I know Micah was trying to be really nice, the supportive boyfriend, but how the heck could he provoke his girlfriend's demon like that? You Come know, on. Main characters in a horror movie have to be kind of stupid. That's just kind of a rule. Oh, I mean, sure. He's a geek who loves the surveillance gadgets. Matt would be doing that too. But the Ouija board was the last straw. I mean, he... I'm sorry to say, but he kind of deserved what he got. I don't know. I honestly feel like I was the most terrified in this, kind of at the two-thirds point, because at that point I just sort of got used to the idea that there's a demon living in the house. What? Well, I mean, I feel like the best way to deal with that would be to just name him Earl and then treat him like he's a harmless, like a pet, like a member of the family. It would just become a sitcom. Or do what they should have done, which is calling the demonologist immediately. Or the Ghostbusters. <laughs> Oh, well, you know what? Bill Murray would have had a funny cameo in this movie, too. Maybe in an alternate ending. Oh my gosh, you know what? Don't even get me started on that, because apparently, and this is killing me because I haven't seen it, Paranormal Activity has at least three different endings that have been circulating and screened, and Spielberg recommended that Orin go with the ending that we end up seeing in this movie. The other ones sound pretty creepy, though. I know, there's one where there's like a throat slashing. Oh my gosh, oh. and then there's another one, which apparently was the one that they originally had, where she screams downstairs, he runs down, there's screaming, obviously you figure that Micah is killed. She comes back up and sits next to the bed, catatonic, for days. Day, night, day, night, you hear her friend calling and leaving a message and she's just catatonic and freaky and then apparently cops come in and then they kill her and that's the end. Now, speaking of the end, <laughs> um, I'm the only one that saw it because, you see, Nat has a very interesting technique when she's watching a horror film. Um, illustrate your, your technique okay, for horror film watching. I know this is going to sound really, really pathetic, but hear me out, people. Since sound plays such a huge role in horror films, you have to do this like ear muffling technique where you're not quite plugging your ears, but you can mute it at any point or listen to it really quietly. And then you cover your face like this, so you can close it at any point. So let's show, let, let's show what the position was at the ending. When, when she looks back at the... Oh, she can't see anything! <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm the okay, only one... Okay, you know one. what? I'm not saying it wasn't terrifying. I am saying this movie was freaking terrifying, okay? okay. I'm just saying I have a way that it's I okay. comfortably like to watch horror movies. And I love horror movies. I as, like as long as you way. can watch them like that. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? I'm sure <laughs> when it comes to DVD deleted scenes, I'm sure the DVD will come with all of them. And if it doesn't, well, that's probably just the first version. Wait for the ultimate version. There must, at some point, be one that has <laughs> all of them. Don't worry. I hope so. And in any event, I'd say this was an incredibly impressive film from a first-time director. And I'm glad Pelly is working on this next one. And if you have not seen Paranormal Activity yet... Which you should have seen if you've watched this far. But if you haven't, you should definitely check it out if you're not not too chicken. Oh fuck.